Hi, welcome to Lesson 26, Session 2. Today we're going to be continuing our work on solving multi-step word problems with conversions. So, and, and there's a pretty heavy emphasis on that solving multi-step uh, word problems portion. So there is going to definitely be multiple steps in the questions that we're doing today. So the one thing I would just encourage you to do is really just um, you know, keep your energy up and um, and push through to the end of each of these problems because some of them do take a little bit of effort. And I really want to make sure that that you are doing the best that you can, and that if you get stuck, please reach out to your teacher. Don't just um, sit and not and try and like not do it or just rush through and not do your best work. Please reach out to your teacher and let them know that you need an extra hand because this um, these uh, these next couple days are a little bit more difficult than maybe what we've done in the past. We're going to be working in our Ready Classroom Math Workbook on pages 535 through 540. So go ahead and turn to page 535 in your Ready Classroom Math Workbook now. Now, um, on this page, um, we see uh, a picture. This is a stopwatch, and the stopwatch keeps track of time. Um, in this case, it's, a, it's keeping track of the amount of time that it takes to walk a trail. And so um, we're just going to go ahead and read and try to solve this problem below. So it says this, Casey is making an exercise plan. She plans to walk a trail near her home 20 times each month. It takes 40 minutes to walk the trail. If Casey keeps the same pace, how many hours will she spend walking the trail each month? So first of all, what are we talking about? We're talking about walking a trail. And what is it that we're trying to find out? Remember, that's usually the question where the question comes in in this um, in this equation or this problem. And the question is, if Casey keeps the same pace, how many hours will she spend walking the trail each month? And then finally, what is the important information of this sentence? Well, we know that she wants to do, walk this trail twenty times um, in one month. And we know that it takes her 40 minutes to walk the trail. It's also important that we notice that we want our answer to be in hours. And we also need to know that one hour equals 60 minutes. So there's quite a bit of important information in this problem. So when we're looking at this problem, there's a few things we need to think about. The first thing is that we know that she's going to walk 20 um, times a month. Okay, so let's just start writing down kind of this important information. So we know she's going to do 20 times a month. And each time it's going to be, each time is 40 minutes which is great. So we know that she wants to walk 20 times a month and that each time that she walks, it'll take her 40 minutes. Now, the part where this gets a little bit tricky is we want to find out that if she keeps the same pace, how many hours will she spend walking um, each month? So if I were doing this, my first step would be how many minutes does she walk a month? So when we think about how many minutes she walks in a month, we're going, what can we do to figure out how many minutes she walks in a month? That's right. We can multiply the number of times she walks times the number of minutes. It actually really is that easy. So we can multiply what is 20 times 40. And that's going to give us our total number of minutes that she walks in one month. So um, when we're multiplying uh, by powers of 10, we know, we know that we can multiply 2 times 4 and get 8 and then add these two zeros to the end to get 800. So she walks 800 minutes. So that's the first part of this problem. The second part of this um, equation, or excuse me, the second part of this problem that we need to solve now is we know how many minutes she walks. Now we need to solve, we need to convert our minutes to hours. 
So if we're converting minutes to hours, what operation are we going to use? We're going from minutes to hours. Which unit is larger, a minute or an hour? That's right, an hour is larger. So remember, when we're going from a smaller unit to a larger unit, we're going to divide. We're going to use the div, um, division operation. So we're going to start with our total number of minutes. And then we're going to divide by the number of minutes in one hour. How many minutes are in one hour? That is 60 minutes in one hour. And then that's going to give us our number of hours. So to solve, I'm going to go ahead and um, write this out um, so we can solve it using long division. So how many times does 60 go into 8? It doesn't. How many times does 60 go into 80? It goes in one time. 1 times 60 is 60. 80 minus 60 is 20. Bring down our 2. Then um, 60 goes into 20. I happen to know 6 times 3 is 18, so I'm going to say 3 times. Then we've got, then we've got uh, 3 times 60 is 180. Subtract and bring, and we have a remainder of uh, 20. So our answer is 13, remember this is our whole number, the 20 is our numerator, and the 60 is our denominator. So 13 and 20 sixtieths. Now we can actually reduce that 20 sixtieths. If we divide them both by 20, that's going to give us 13 and one third hours. So our answer is, how many hours will she spend walking the trail each month? The answer is 13 and one third hours, because um, I just reduced that 20 sixtieths down to one third. But this answer would have been correct as well. So as I said before, it is going to take a couple of steps to go in and figure out what it is that you're solving. I think that um, my number one um, tip for you is going to be to really figure out what step you're going to do first and write it out and then solve that step. And then decide what step you're going to do second and then write out the work for that second step to get to your final answer. And sometimes there might even be a third step. We'll see. All right, go ahead and go to page 535, I mean 536. All right, now in 536, um, we have our picture it and our model it. Remember, we have the same problem as before, but now we're going to explore different ways to understand converting a unit of time in order to solve this um, multi-step word problem. So when we look at this page, um, the, what it shows here is that we can actually use a picture to understand the relationship between hours and minutes. So if we look at this picture and we know that we um, that she walks 40 minutes. Now if we want to know how many minutes that is in an hour, we could divide 40 minutes divided by 60 minutes because there are 60 minutes in one hour. Hang on, it's no focus today. There we go. So there are um, 60 minutes in one hour. And then we know from what we've learned before that every um, division, uh, equ division equation is just could be rewritten as a fraction. So we can rewrite this as 40 divided by 60. So once we have 40 divided by 60, um, down below here, they've went ahead and they have reduced. Um, they first divided by 10, both the 40 and the 60, to get 4 sixths. And then they divided, so they divided by 10 to get to 4 sixths. And then they divided by 2 to get to 2 thirds. So 40 sixtieths is the same as, say, so, uh, so, 40 minutes would be the same as two thirds of one hour. So then if we knew, if we knew that, um, if we knew that she walked two thirds of an hour, 20 times a month, then you could multiply two thirds of an hour 
times 20, which we could change to 20 over 1, which would give us 40 thirds. And then if we divide 40 into thirds, so 40 divided by 3, 3 goes into 1, 4 one time, bring, and then bring down the 0. 3 goes into 10, 3 times 3, times 3 is 9, minus 1. This is our whole number, our numerator, and our denominator. So 40 thirds is the same as 13 and 1 third. So did we get the same answer? Yes, we did. But what we did here that was different than what we did on the last page is first we decided to go ahead and convert the minutes into hours. And then we multiplied the hours times the number of days that she walked. So first we converted minutes to hours. Then, um, which, well, I guess this would be step one here. And then step two is multiplying how long one hour, uh, how long she, how many hours she walked in one sitting and then multiplied it by the 20 times that she did that. So those are the two steps if we did it that way. We can also write an equation, and this is the method that we used. You can write an equation to find the number of times Casey will walk the trail in one month. Casey walks the trail in 40 minutes. To find the total number of minutes walked, multiply the total number of minutes by the number of times Casey will walk the trail. So this is what we did. We said she would walk 40 minutes, 20 times, and that would give us 800 minutes. So we knew she'd spend 800 minutes walking the trail. This is the same as our step one. We took it the next step further and we did our step two, which was to convert to hours. And that's when we said 800 divided by 60 and that's how we got our 13 and one third. Now I know it's not quite that simple, but um, since we already did the work on the last page, I just wanted to write it there. So that just gives you a little bit of um, a background on a couple of different ways that you could solve this problem. So now let's go ahead and um, make our connections. So why, um, why do we need to convert units of time in order to solve this problem? Why did we need to figure out how many minutes, how, why did we have to change those minutes to, ooh, sorry about that. Why did we have to change those minutes to hours? Well, we are told that she walks using minutes as the unit, okay? So we were told the 40 minutes that she walks is the unit. But the question asks us how many hours she walked. The units are different, so we have to convert our minutes to hours to get our answer because our, we've been asked to give our answer as uh, in hours. So that's why we had to convert the minutes to hours. Now, if we look over here at the picture it, we can convert minutes to hours before we multiply. So we knew that she walked 40 minutes and so to convert our minutes to hours, we divided 40 divided by 60, which we rewrote as a fraction as 40 divided by 60. And then we simply reduced that fraction down to two thirds of an hour. If you look up here, you can see that 40 minutes, this would be 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, 40 minutes. If you thought of, um, if you thought of this uh, as in thirds, how many of those thirds are shaded in? We have one third shaded in and two thirds shaded in. That's how that picture helps you because we have one third, which would be 20 minutes, and then another third, which is another 20 minutes. So that's why 40 minutes is two thirds of an hour. If we think of this clock in thirds. So what part of an hour is 40 minutes? We know that it's two thirds because 40 divided by 40 sixtieths or 40 divided by 60 it does reduce down to two thirds. I went straight to two thirds by dividing both 40 and 60 by 20, but here they first divided by 10 and then divided by two. It didn't really matter how you did it, you're still gonna get to the same answer of two thirds of an hour.
I'm going to put an hour after that. All right. So we're going to show how to find the number of hours that Casey will walk the trail using our answer to, um, from problem two. So we're going to use this two thirds. Explain why this method works. Now, I actually already did this step over here, so I'm just going to transfer that right over to here. We know that two thirds times 20 is the same as two thirds times 20 over one, because we can rewrite any whole number as a fraction when we make it over one. Then we're going to multiply straight across. Two times 20 is 40. Three times one is three which gives us 40 thirds. And then I did the work over here. So we know that 40 thirds is the same as 13 and one thirds of an hour. Now this works because Casey walks two thirds of an hour, 20 times each month. So we already converted our minutes to hours and then we multiplied the number of hours that she walks times the number of times she walks each month. Now, if we're looking down at this model it, numbers one, two, and three, really we're talking about the picture it. We're going to look now at the model it, um, which is the bottom half of page 536. What operation do you use to convert minutes to hours? So when we're converting minutes to hours, what operation do we use? Remember, you need to ask yourself, which unit is the larger unit, the minutes or the hours? That's right. We need to divide because we're going, because minutes are smaller than hours. So we use division when we convert a smaller unit to a larger unit. So we're going to, going to do 800 divided by 60, which we know from the very first page of work, we know that that does in fact equal 13 and one third hour. So number five asks us how the solution methods from picture it and model it are alike and different. So if we're looking at the solution from number three and the solution from number four, how are they alike and diff different? Well, they both convert minutes to hours. So both of them are doing, are converting the minutes to hours. But in picture it, in this, in this top um, example over here, you convert the minutes to hours before you multiply by the number of days. So we chose to convert from um, the 40 minutes into um, two thirds of an hour. So that 40 minutes converted to two thirds of an hour, and then we multiplied it by 20 days. In the model it, um, we converted after we multiplied. So we first multiplied the number of minutes times the number of days and got the total number of minutes. And then we converted the 800 minutes into hours and did it that direction. As you can see, both methods work. Both methods got us to the um, same answer. So you really need to figure out what is going to be your best method to get you to that correct answer. Now, as we've done, and we always do at the end of each lesson, we are going to reflect. We're going to look back at what we did. And this was our try it strategy. Then we're going to look at the picture it and the model it and decide which strategy we like best to convert measurements. So I want you to tell me if, it's, if you prefer to use a, an equation or if you prefer to use a picture because those are really the two methods we looked at today. So the strategy I like best to convert measurements is and then um, write that strategy and then tell me why. When, um, go ahead and pause the video and you, write the, and you can write that out. And then when you are done, you can go ahead and turn, and we're going to go to page 538. All right, on page 538, we've got three problems here that we're going to do together before you work on your independent practice on your own. So we're looking at number seven. It says this, Elijah's dog needs eight ounces of food per day. Elijah buys dog food by the pound. How many pounds of food does Elijah need to buy to feed his dog for two weeks? Show your work. So first of all, we need to, what is this problem talking about? It's talking about um, Elijah's dog who needs food. And we're trying to find out 
Um, how many pounds of food does Elijah need to buy to feed his dog for two weeks? The important information is that he needs eight ounces of food per day. And we know that we've um, 16 ounces equals one pound. And one, uh, one week is seven days. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how I would solve this problem, but you might have a different method. So if you'd like to try and solve this on your own before we do it together, you can go ahead and um, pause the video here, solve it, and then come back and see if you did it the same way I did it or if you chose a different method. All right, if I were solving this, the first thing I would do is find out how many ounces of food Elijah needs in all. So how many ounces of food does Elijah need for two weeks? So that's what we're going to solve first. So the first thing we need to do is we need to go, okay, if we have two weeks, two weeks equals how many days? Well, one week is seven days, so two weeks is 14 days. So first of all, we know that we need 14 days. And then we know that Elijah's dog needs eight ounces of food per day. So we're going to multiply 14 times eight to find the number of ounces Elijah's dog needs. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that work over here. Four times eight is 32, carry the three. Eight times one is eight, plus three is 11. So Elijah's dog needs 112 ounces of food for 14 days. So now we have our answer, but we have our answer in ounces. But what do we need our answer in? I did forget to circle that. We need to have our answer in pounds, in pounds. So now the next step we're going to do is convert to pounds. So what operation will we need if we're converting from ounces to pounds? Which is the larger unit, ounces or pounds? That's right, the larger unit is the pound. So if we're going from a smaller unit to a larger unit, we divide. So we're going to go ahead and figure out what is 112 divided by the number of ounces in one pound, which is 16. So that gives us an answer of 112 sixteenths, but don't worry, we're going to go ahead and write that out and solve it. So I'll do it up here. What is 112 divided by 16? Um, I don't know how many times um, 16 goes in. It doesn't go into 1 and it doesn't go into 11, so we need to figure out how many times it goes into 112. So don't you worry. I have my multiples of 1 through 10 charts, so I'm going to pull that out right now. And we're going to figure out our multiples of 16 and get, go up to one. Uh, we're going to stop as soon as we get um, to 112 or past 112. 16 times 1 is 16. 16 times 2 is, I happen to know that it's 32. 16 times 3 is 48. 16 times 4, ooh, I can't do that one in my head anymore, so I'm going to go ahead and do repeated addition. 6 plus 4, eight plus, 6 plus 8 is 14. Um, 4 plus 1 plus 1 is 6, so that's 64. 64 plus 16 is 70. 70 plus 6, oh, oh, it's not 70. Look at that. I almost messed us up. It's actually 80. I better stick to my... I better stick to my um, stick to my repeated addition. See, even teachers make mistakes. And look at that. 
we got to evenly to 112. So how many times does 16 go into 112? Seven times. So we'll go back over to our uh, equation and write seven. So we know that 112 sixteenths is the same as seven pounds. So Elijah needs seven pounds of dog food for those two weeks. So it doesn't seem so bad. You just have to really figure out what is it that you need to solve first and then what is it that you need to solve second. As I said before, I think your best bet is to go ahead and to write out what you're going to do first and then what you're going to do second. Now, could we have converted these dog food, these ounces into pounds first and then multiplied it by 14? Yes, we could have. But this is just the method that I chose. Your method, your best method may be different. All right, we're going to go ahead and do number eight. And then I think we're going to save number um, nine for you guys to do on your own just because um, this video is getting pretty long and you guys are doing so well hanging with me. So we're just going to, I'm going to do one more with you and then um, you will do number nine on your own. I'll help get you started though. All right, so the first thing we're going to do here is read this next problem. It says, Mr. Rubens has four and a half quarts of watercolor paint. His class is making a mural. Each of the 20 students in his class will get one cup of paint. Does he have enough paint for all of his students? Show your work. So we're talking about watercolor paint. We want to know if Mr. Rubens has enough paint for all of his students. And then um, the important information is that he has four and a half quarts of paint. Um, he has 20 students who all need one cup of paint each. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to figure out how much, how many cups does he need? So we know that he has 20 students and each student needs one cup of paint. So if we have 20 students and we multiply that times one cup, that equals 20 cups. Okay, so we know that he needs 20 cups of paint. Now we need to figure out, does he have 20 cups of paint? So the next step is, does he have 20 cups of paint? So we're gonna go ahead and look, and we need to figure out four and a half quarts. How many cups is four and a half quarts? So we know that one quart is equal to four cups. So we're gonna take this four and a half quarts, and we're going, if we're gonna go from quarts to cups, quarts to cups, are we gonna multiply or divide? That's right, we're gonna multiply because quarts are a larger unit than cups. So we're gonna multiply four and a half times the number of cups in one, uh, the number of cups in one quart. Now we can't solve it this way because we've got a mixed number. So we definitely need to change that mixed number to an improper fraction. So to do that, we're gonna multiply two times four, which equals eight, and then eight plus one equals nine. So our new improper fraction is going to be nine halves times four over one, because that four is the same as four over one. Then we're gonna multiply straight across. Nine times four is 36. Two times one is two. Now, we want to know how many groups of two are there in 36. This one's pretty easy because we can take 36 and divide it by two. And I happen to know that 36 divided by two is 18. So, we're not almost done. We're almost done. So, he needs 20 cups of paint for his class. Does he have 20 cups of paint? How many cups of paint does he have? No, he does not have 20 cups of paint. So the question is, does he have enough paint for all of his students? No, he only has 18 cups. 
he would need two more cups of paint in order to make it work. So those are our two steps. All right, as I promised before, I'm not going to do this problem for you, but what I am going to do for you is help you set it up and help you come up with your two steps. So let's read the problem first. A lemur at a zoo has a mass. Remember, mass is a fancy way to say weight. Um, a mass of three kilograms, 630 grams. So this means it's this is almost the same as saying like he has 3.630, but it doesn't really. So don't write that. The point is he has like three holes and then a part of a kilogram. Okay. So we know that he has three kilograms. And then we also know he has this other part of which is in grams. And this is altogether how much the lemur weighs. The zookeeper records the lemur's mass in grams. What will the zookeeper write for the mass of the lemur? Show your work. So what are we talking about? We're talking about the weight of lemurs and their mass. What are we trying to solve? We want to know what will the zookeepers write for the mass of the lemur uh, in grams. And then what is the important information? We know that the lemur weighs this much. But we want to know the whole, oops, sorry about that. We want to know the whole amount in grams, not just the part. We also want to turn this part into grams. And so the first step you will need to do is you need to take these three kilograms and turn them into grams. So what is three kilograms in grams? So if we're going from a, ki a kilogram to a gram, remember we're gonna multiply because we're multiplying um, the larger unit, I mean, we multiply the larger unit by the smaller unit to find out how many of the smaller units we have. So you're gonna multiply your three kilograms times 1,000 to find out how many grams you have. Then for part two, once you know how many grams you have, you're going to add those grams to 630 to get the total grams. Because what we've done is we have separated the three kilograms over here, the 630 kilograms over here. We're gonna add this number plus 630 to get our total answer. So you probably could do that mostly in your head. Um, and you know what, I'm feeling like such a nice teacher right now that I'm gonna go ahead and help you out and finish this with you. So three times 1,000 is 3,000. And then if we add 3,000 plus 630, we get 3,630. So the answer is 3,630 grams is what the zookeeper would write. Whew, you stuck it out today and great job. I really am proud of how hard you worked. Um, you're gonna go ahead and work on the green pages on pages 539 and 540 on your own. And if you have any questions, you can email your teacher. Otherwise, I'll see you tomorrow.